Inheritance is a very powerful tool, but just like any powerful tool, you have to use it when it's appropriate. The general rule of thumb is that you should only use inheritance if there, if you can say that type B is A of type A. So for example, a mammal is an animal, or uh, a primate is a mammal. Because you can say that, you can consider using inheritance. If you can't say that, you should definitely not use inheritance. It's definitely not, if it's not a subtype, you should not use it. But even when you can say that, there are times when you still should not use inheritance. And to illustrate that, we're going to create another subtype of rectangle. Now it turns out this subtype will actually be perfectly safe. And then we're going to do something a little bit different and show when you shouldn't use it. So, well, everyone is aware of the fact that a square is a rectangle. A square is a special case of rectangle where the width and the height happen to be equal. And we will often refer to that as the length. So I want to make my square inherit from rectangle. Now, skull is going to be, let's go ahead and let's put a vowel here. Skull is going to be a little bit unhappy with this. And the reason is because a rectangle needs to have two arguments. And so we have to supply two arguments from our square, and I can do that here. They are both length. Both the width and the height are length here. Now, once I've done this, it turns out I'm actually perfectly happy with everything that's inside of rectangle. Everything that's inside of rectangle will not work. I can even get rid of the curly braces if I want. This is a perfectly happy square. I can create one over here. and I can call print shape data and pass it the square. This code compiles, it runs, there's nothing wrong with this. But now let's create a slightly different version of rectangle. Okay, so this rectangle was immutable. It had vowels for the width and the height. I'm actually going to create a new rectangle that we are going to call mutable rectangle. And that's not spelled correctly, <laughs> so I will refactor this. Okay. Like the original rectangle, I want it to extend shape. It needs to have a width and a height, but this time I am going to make them private bar width, private, bar, height. Okay. And in fact, let's do our standard. We're going to put some underscores in here. Extend shape. Did I make that a comma? Oh. I forgot to put the colon double. These are both going to be doubles. So it's much like our original rectangle, except we're making these private bars. And then we can put inside of here our methods that allow us to set the width and the height So and to get them. So I can make a def width, which is underscore width, a def height, which is underscore height. I can define area and perimeter the exact same way that I did before. Okay. But I also want to be able to set these. That's why it's mutable. So I'm going to say def width underscore equals and we'll pass in a new value for it underscore width equals w def height underscore equals we'll pass in a new value for the height and we see underscore height equals that new value okay so we have a mutable rectangle here it has the area and perimeter defined and we can get the width and height but we can also modify the width and the height 
Now what happens when we create a new mutable square? Well, okay. So as before, I'm going to give it a length, and it seems reasonable to say private var underscore length is a double, and it extends mutable rectangle with length length. Now for our immutable square with our immutable rectangle, that's where we stop. That's all that we needed. We could put in a method to get the length, a method to set the length here, but we already have a problem. And the problem can be seen here. Let's make, well, we'll call it square two is a new mutable square, and we'll say it's five. Everything looks good there. Square two dot width equals 99. Well, what just happened? Well, we no longer have a square. Okay. Because now we have a quote square, which happens to have a width of 99 and a length of five. Well, that's not a square anymore. So it, the immutable square is perfectly happy inheriting from the immutable rectangle. But the mutable rectangle, we cannot inherit from because it has these methods which allow us to mutate width and height. And we're not supposed to be able to do that in the mutable square. Now, theoretically, I could put inside of here, I could put, I could override this method. Okay, so, and hopefully, well, actually, I, okay, right now I can't override it because the width there, well, we need to learn more things to be able to do this. We'll come back to this example. And what I could do was I could make it so that it set both the width and the height from that same value. There's a problem there though. Okay, so even though this might seem like a quick fix, the problem is that if you, if we pass this in to say a function that's expecting a rectangle, when you set the width on a rectangle, you don't expect the, the length to also change. Okay, that's not the behavior you expect from a rectangle. So even though we could kind of force this to work, maybe, sort of, it would be violating the contract of a rectangle. It would be doing things that a developer working with the code would not expect a rectangle to do. And so this inheritance, making the mutable square extend mutable rectangle, is actually not a safe thing to do. In this case, we should just extend shape and have it so that it could be a square. By making it extend the mutable rectangle, we've gotten methods, we've gotten the ability to do things that squares shouldn't be able to do. So anytime if your inheritance is gonna give you stuff that you shouldn't be able to do in the subtype, even if I can say a square is a rectangle, even if I can say something like that, if I would get methods that I shouldn't have and get the ability to do things that I shouldn't be able to do, you do not want to use inheritance in that situation.